still have six games to play. Today's doubleheader against the Mets, an opponent they've beaten 14 times in 17 tries. Blake Trinan goes in game one, and Geo in game two. A full day and night of Nats baseball begins now. Rain a good part of the night, rain a good part of this morning, and right now still coming down, but not that bad. It was pretty, well, pretty coming down hard about an hour and a half ago, and this guy looks like he's ready for a little action, a C. We've got a couple hundred, couple thousand maybe, of our favorite fans here today. They're going to enjoy some interesting baseball. The Nats magic number down to two now to clinch home field against the Dodgers. They're still winning out in the West, and that's... The list of the best teams in the league right now, but we know where the best one resides. So we have this unusual situation. Two today, two tomorrow, and on a wet track, Ryan Zimmerman's going to play left field. Yeah, and that's where Matt Williams wants him right now. No quick motions. He kind of govern the way he moves out there in the outfield. You wonder how the wet track will affect Ryan out there today. So I'm sure he's going to take it easy. But like I always say, when you get in the heat of battle, your instincts take over. I don't care how smart you are as a player. Every once in a while, like this play right here, you're thinking, I'm going to score. And you forget totally about what's going on in your body. And, and that tweaked Ryan's hamstring a little bit. Took a couple days off back in there today. But we'll see how it goes in left field on the wet track. 37. Seven RBIs in 55 games when Zimmerman's in there this year. And we sure liked what we saw the night after the clincher in Atlanta the last time Blake Trina started a ball game. If he wasn't on a pitch limit, he might have shut down the Braves for seven or eight innings in that game. Yeah, mostly fastballs, too. Just throwing the sinker, 95, 96 miles an hour. He's been great as a starter this year. Six starts, one and three with a 2 2 7. And he's just been outstanding. It's faced guys like Clayton Kershaw, Volquez, Andrew Kashner, Tim Hudson, Jeff Samarja, Alex Wood, or his record would be much better than the one in three. Love the way he threw the ball last time out. Now, how about the way Adam LaRoche is swinging? There's that amazing homer off the top of the wall in L.A. You know, that swing for a while could have been the difference between home field advantage and not for the Nats and the Dodgers. The man's on fire. Sixth in the league in home runs. Fifth in RBIs. And he's having a fantastic September at an RBI per game. Viva LaRoche. And he's in there today.
Football on Masson brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you and by visitannapolis.org. Find it here. Yeah, close up of some of the work the ground screw's been doing last night and today to get the field ready for this one. Field looks like it's in pretty good condition. They uncovered it within the last hour. Got the batter's box, the mound, and everything in working order. Bryce Harper, the first net on the field. Ryan Zimmerman right behind him. And here they come. Visit trainsearch.com to find your local train. Comfort specialist dealer. Hard to stop a train. Really hard, so it's going to be 66 at game time. Obviously quite humid with the rain in the area. And it's not a big band of storms. It's just kind of a long finger coming straight down from the north, hovering over Nationals Park. And we look forward to having that filter its way right out of here. The Mets are 12th in the league at hitting, 8th in runs and 10th in home runs. And Daniel Murphy is having a good season at Nationals Park. 12 for 30. Murph is 0 for his last 13. Still in the top 10 of the league, batting 293. So Blake Trinan takes the mound against the Mets. He's had one career relief appearance against them. One run, three hits over two innings. Fastball slider change the arsenal. Fastball's averaging 95 miles an hour. And when he's right, it's got a lot of sink on it. It's really all he needs. I told you in the open, his record as a starter. One and three, two and three overall. 227 as a starter, 194 overall. Opponents hitting 274 against Blake Trinan. How nice is it as an organization when you have a spot starter that throws 98 that you can just roll out there whenever you need him? Well, I know everybody in Atlanta that saw him down there, very impressed with him. There's your defense for game one of the day night doubleheader. Michael A. Taylor gets the start in center field. Bryson left Zimmerman, or Bryson right Zimmerman and left, excuse me, Desmond Franzen, Espinosa LaRoche, and Jose Lobaton behind the plate. Yeah, the Nats keep winning when Jose Lobaton is behind the plate. And he sits safely in 15 of his last 17 starts as well. Lobatone playing in his 65th game of the year. Michael A. Taylor in his 13th big league game. And he has a home run, three RBI so far. We're looking forward to watching him play some center field. Greg Gibson is the crew chief. He's got the plate. He'll have the night off for the game later. Chris Siegel comes in to help out at first base. As David Rackley will have the plate tonight. Tony Randazzo, Jim Wolf around the bases as well. 107 in DC, rainy conditions, and the first pitch of the game upstairs to Matt Dendecker. Let the baseball marathon begin. Four games, two days. Here we go. And a ball pretty well hit out to left center. It's going to be Taylor drifting to the edge of the track to grab the first one of the game. 19 over are the Nats since the All-Star break. Second best in baseball. Baltimore a little bit better. But the Nats have won 9 out of 10. They're totally dominating the Mets this year. 5 and 2 here and 14 and 3 overall. Last time teams played back-to-back doubleheaders, and this happens in September because of weather. Red Sox at Yankees mid-September 2006. The only other time it happens is when you get in the loser's bracket and slow pitch softball. Yeah, Maybe that Labor got, Day tournament really gets tough. Yeah, you got to play your way back to the championship. <laughs> doubleheaders everywhere. There's a base hit to right from Wilmer Flores, who continues to swing the bat pretty well. That'll bring in Daniel Murphy. Still looking for his 170th hit. He's the first of four Mets in the lineup today that have hit against Blake Trine and has a single against him in one trip. Murphy two nights ago 0 for 4. Well, the Mets moved him to third base. And ever since he's been over there, he's hitting 196, 9 for 46 since they moved him to third.
fouled it off his foot. That's really interesting. David Wright, of course, injured out for the rest of the season right before that. Some of that might have to do with getting hit by a Matt Thornton fastball on his wrist. But he moved to third before that. Yeah, guy hitting 293 is still in the top 10 in the National League batting race. Murphy out to center, and Taylor got a good jump on that. Two down, and Lucas Duda will be the power matchup next. Matt Williams saying that Denard Span has a chance to play in the night game tonight. We'll check him out after the game, see how his knee is doing. Scraped up, a little bruised. And you and I thought for a little while because of the wet track Ryan Zimmerman might not start this game. But the lineup change we thought might happen never did and Ryan's in there and we'll see him batting third shortly. But this field drains so well. It does. Thing I worry about is the warning track but you know there are ways to be careful. Around that. You mean the crushed lava rock warning track. Yeah. I'll stop. Have you determined where that's come from yet? <laughs> no. What what volcano? Do not get me going. Come on. Ball one to Duda, who's 0 for 1 against Trinan. And Lucas Duda tied for fourth, actually third in the league in home runs, with Justin Upton and Todd Frazier. Anthony Rizzo has 31, John Carlos Stanton 37. And that's into right center for a base hit. Flores will turn, easily go to third base. So the Mets have come out and taken some pretty good swings at Blake Trinan here. Spectacular play by Denard Span Tuesday night. Now watch the route, direct as usual, going right to the baseball. Maybe a little adjustment there at the end. But I guess if you're going to run into a sign, the Kaiser Permanente sign is as good as any. What a catch by Denard. And you saw the right knee kind of dragging along the dirt right there. Huge scab opened up. Little bruise to his right knee. Matt Williams just wants to keep him off his feet for obvious reasons. Now trying and facing Curtis Granderson for the first time. One other ball game this afternoon. Milwaukee an early run at Cincinnati. Everything later. And that's going to put the Mets on top. So one hopper right at Bryce Harper. Trail runner Duda stops at second base and it's one nothing just like that. Granderson RBI number 63. My Granderson telling his first base coach Tom Goodwin what he hit just a sinker there came right back down the middle line drive to right puts the Mets up. Five game hitting streak for Curtis Granderson. On a three game streak is Kirk Neuenheis, the center fielder. Late break on the slider, first strike. So important for Blake trying to get that off speed in there, four strikes early. You know, at this level, even if you throw 96, 97, 98 with sink, hitters will adjust. It's a very relaxing at bat where you don't have to worry about anything else but the fastball. Ball in, Ball in says Greg Gibson. Newt Heiss also one for one like Murphy was against Trinan. Playing in his 60th game of the year, Kirk Newt Heiss hitting 255. Ball out. Two and one. Ball out, said Greg Gibson. You don't get to hear that very often. We may hear a few things in game one that we don't normally hear thanks to crowd noise. Yeah. This might be an earmuffs game for you kids <laughs> watching at home. <laughs> Good sink on 95 there. I mean, that that happens every time I see Blake trying to pitch. I think it's a changeup, and you look, and it's 95 miles an hour just based on the movement. Watch a movement on the fastball. My Crazy. goodness, that's a fastball. Split action to it. My reaction was the exact same as yours. 
saw the radar gun. Oh wow, fastball. 2-2 two -two now. And the backdoor slider, Trinan has it. So he gives up three singles a run in the first inning. Time to settle things down and get the offense going. Taylor leads off today. In the league and hitting third in runs fourth in home runs then you get down to the number seven man and that's what Jose Lobaton has done with the bat FP told you the other day he's been in the weight room this summer he's put on a few LBs swinging the bat with authority and hitting 233 so he's actually in front of Danny Espinosa in the game one of the doubleheader lineup and here's Dylan G, 8 and 7 career against the Nats. Last start, he threw the fastball 60% of the time, the slider 5, the curveball 15, the changeup 19% of the time. So Dylan G, you've seen him before, two seam fastball. Kind of mimics his changeup, both with a little sink to him. When he's down the zone, his changeup is on, he is good. 16th career start against the Nats. That 86 up in the zone a little bit, inside corner to Michael Taylor. Who, when he faced Dylan G in New York, went 0 for 1 with a pair of walks. Oh, Fastball inside. And a pretty good breaking ball at 74, strike two. A four to three loss last time out on the 17th against the Marlins as you look at the curveball went six and two thirds gave up four runs on seven hits 93 pitches. And that is a swing and a miss and a ball in the dirt. And so the defense for the Mets in game one Dendecker new and heist Granderson in the outfield to Hunter Murphy left side Flores Duda right side Juan Centeno behind the plate. Yeah, Bryce gets a little action in right field today, and he'll be in the number two spot. And he's done well against Dylan G, six for 16 career with a couple of home runs. Singled his first time up against G in New York, September 12th. Dylan won the only game of the series the Mets took of those four. It's a 4 3 game. The antics of Mejia at the end of that game that night. Irritating some of the Nats who went out and took care of business on Saturday and Sunday. At that time, Jill and G was seven and seven. Right now, he is seven and eight. Price hitting just under 290 over the last six weeks. One ball, two strikes on the foul. After a long pause, a one-two pitch. 
Harper reaching and Dylan G has it two outs. That'll bring in Ryan Zimmerman. I'll tell you what, from a player's standpoint, having to play a doubleheader this late in the season, obviously not a lot of Nats guys going to play both games, if any. But when you've already clinched a division and you're playing in front of, I don't know, maybe 300 people, 400 people, it is tough to get up for a game. I know it's a big league, so I know the stats go on the back of your baseball card, but it's not easy. Ryan's done well against the Mets. Limited sample, 15 at bats. His production this year has been good, as I mentioned in our opening segment. 37 RBIs in 55 games. Seven for 32 career against Dylan G with four walks. Two on pitch. Well hit left side Murphy over to cut it off and Daniel Murphy throws out Ryan Zimmerman who continues to make solid contact one two three the Mets on top early. Park. Anyone who has watched the Nationals over the last few weeks is aware of just how good their rotation has been. But here's a stat for you that might bring it home even more. Nats starting pitchers have allowed three earned runs in fewer in all 21 games that this team has played in September. That streak of games with three earned runs or fewer allowed is tied for the longest by any team in the majors this season. The Braves did it in their first 21 games of the 2014 campaign, and that includes Blake Trinan. His last time out against the Braves the day after the Nationals clinched, he went five scoreless innings down in Atlanta. So this Nats rotation, guys, continues to plug along, just churning out quality start after quality start. Yeah, Staff ERA, Dan, 3.01, best in baseball. Well, in October, baseball runs hard to come by, and that'll play big. It always does. The team with the best pitching usually advances the deepest. Seven, eight, nine for the Mets. Top of the second. Ruben Tejada first. He's 0 for 1 career against Trinan. And they continue to hit line drives. Ryan Zimmerman gets over, plays it well, gets the ball back in a hurry, holds him to a single. Well done. Mets four for seven to start the game. A little elevated with the sinker right now for Trinan at times. You see where this one is, belt high for Tahad, and that's what you do against the sinker ball guy. You're looking for the ball up. A nice play by Ryan Zimmerman. Got over this ball very well, and a good throw. I mean, he got over there quick, running better than I thought. Here's one Centeno, the catcher. 
Six for 23 in eight games this year. A couple of RBIs. He's 24 years of age from Arecibo, Puerto Rico. And the Mets took him in the 27th round seven years ago. In the minor leagues for the better part of eight years, he had 10 at bats at the big league level last year. Hits a double play ball in between Hop Espinosa. Handled that beautifully. Once he did, pretty quick turn for Ian Desmond. Yeah, I mean, he handled that because of his feet. His feet stayed moving. He got the tough hop. He actually backed up on it a little bit. Watch. Gets caught in between. Back up. Good play. Good feed. Four, six, three, double play. Ball kind of shot on him a little bit, too, there at the end. Nice hands by Espinosa. And that brings up the pitcher, Dylan G, who's one for 36. Everybody talks about having soft hands as an infielder, and a lot of that is God given. But if you keep your feet moving for you young players, if your feet are moving, it enables your hands to stay soft and make last minute adjustments just like Danny did. Ian Desmond, nice big hop. So the leadoff hit. Thanks to the double play, turns into a very quick top of the second. LaRoche Desmond Franzen straight ahead. In a ball game, he's faced Adam LaRoche. He's been taken deep. STG inside the numbers. First, we check out the season series. Total domination by the Nats. The batting average nearly 60 points higher. Home runs almost four to one. ERA less than half of the Mets. Opening day in New York. Adam LaRoche was batting six, actually seventh in the lineup that day. Harper had walked, leading off the second, and there it went. He hit some far ones at City Field this year. He Remember does. last time we were there, he hit one halfway up the foul pole. This one the other way, which is no small feat in that ballpark. That night, FP, he was batting cleanup, and Cabrera had walked in the first inning. So Dylan G, to his credit, got a 1 2 3 first inning so he wouldn't have to face LaRoche in the first. So Adam now has three career home runs and six batted in against the Mets right hander. That 14 and three record against the Mets. The Nats are 27 and 26 against the rest of the division. Interesting. And one of the reasons, another reason, they're way above 500, 24 and nine against the West this year. One over against the Central. Now 12 over against the East. And as G nibbles away, it goes to two and one. And the West was one last night. <laughs> the Dodgers. By the way, LaRoe, seven homers, 21 RBIs, 18 September ball games. Ball three. Can't blame Dylan G for staying away. He's given up 18 home runs this year, two of them to the guy in the box. 
And he got under that one. Out to center for Kirk Neuenheis. Four in a row for Dylan G to start this game. Saturday, September 27th, 4.05 start against the Marlins. Tyler Clipper Bobblehead. It's presented by PNC Bank. First 25,000 fans, you get your clip bobblehead. Go to nationals.com slash tickets for more details. Big day for goggles at the yard Saturday. Well, it's supposed to be nice today, not so much. I've had to wipe my glasses off about 10 times already. Here's Desmond. Looked like a front door breaking ball, didn't do a whole lot, flew right over his helmet. Ian, 10 for 40 career with three home runs. Four batted in against Dylan G. Now that breaking ball did a lot. Working quickly. And Desmond got a fastball right through the box. And Dylan G lucky that didn't get a piece of him. He and Desmond now over 16 games batting around 320. Elevated. Watch the location of this fastball. Almost above the belt. Nee and Desmond does a nice job of getting on top of that. Hitting it right back where it came from. Actually a little top spin to that. And there goes the no hitter. Look out Dylan G. Kevin Franzen. And he got jammed on a pitch up. Little flare right field and Granderson right there. First time Kevin Franzen ever faced Dylan G. So the Nats in September, compared to two years ago, it's not like they backed into the playoffs in 12. I mean, they had a winning September, but nowhere near the percentage as it is this season. I mean, 15 and 6, that's impressive. Six games to play over a four day span. I mean, talk about playing well at the right time, being hot going into the playoffs. They weren't in 2012. There's a low baton. Even more than the record, Carp, if you remember in 2012, the Nats just weren't playing good baseball late in the season. Throwing the ball around a little bit. You could tell some guys were fatigued. Davey Johnson really, really rode his horses. Even after they clinched, you were thinking, okay, some of the bench guys are going to get some time right here. Spell the everyday guys, but Davey just kept going with his guys, thinking, yeah. I got to keep him fresh for the playoffs. Didn't really use his bench, and there was a few guys that were tired after the season ended going to the playoffs, and you could tell. You know, the Nats had the most wins in baseball that year, 98, but they didn't clinch as early as they did this year because they only beat the Braves by four games. Atlanta won 94 that year. They were in that controversial play-in game against St. Louis, or the Nats might have drawn the Braves in the first round. That infamous infield fly rule play that helped St. Louis win that game in Atlanta. And then kind of a roller coaster ride through that five game series. Jose Lobatone playing his 65th game of the year. Two on count. Desmond, pretty good lead. He had a bit of a lean going. He has stolen 23 out of 28. Lobatono for three career against G. It looked like Centeno was set up away, but he got a strike. Nissan will track it to the inside corner. Yeah, fastball in. Little run back to it. Mets catcher, by the way, hasn't played much this year. 0 for 4 against opposing base runners. And with Desmond holding, Lobatone stays alive. Oh. 
And now Desmond on the move, and Jose had the swing close enough on a 2 2. Good jump by Desmond. Pitch inside. Lobaton strikes out. Two Ks for Dylan G. Two scoreless innings. His offense has given him a 1 0 lead. Jason Wirth had won a ball game with a homer, and the Nats start going the long distance. Zimmerman first, then Harper. Michael Morse would hit one. The Nationals were pounding Adam Wainwright and FP. They just couldn't get the thing closed out the rest of the night, but those were some moments here as the team. How much a year they had to start two on the road and three in a row at home? It, yeah, exact opposite of how the ballpark is today. <laughs> the loudest. This place has ever been. I don't know, maybe Jason Worth's home run the night before a little bit louder, but this place was going nuts. Yeah, that's as far back as I can remember. The rest I've totally washed out of my brain. Yeah. It'll be rocking soon. It'll be just like that, and I can't wait. Yeah, St. Louis and Pittsburgh both lost last night, so the Pirates are still in the hunt for the division title, game and a half back. The truck is telling me that the rest of the, the game, the tapes have been erased. I know that's happened here in D.C. before, but I think the truck got it right. Ball one to Matt Dendecker. 2-0, oh, he flew to center field to start the ball game. Matt Dendecker in his 50th game of the year for the Mets. From the University of Florida, three time All SEC guy. Grew up in the Fort Lauderdale area. Mets fifth rounder four years ago. So Blake trying in 16 pitches first inning, but only seven in the second with that double play. Counts even now, 2 2. Still having a hard time getting over the top of that. 94 up and away, full count. When you really get your fingers on top, that's when you see that split action. When your fingers kind of your your arm drops down the side and you release points late, that's when you get the run action versus the sink. That's run. Yeah, up it goes. First walk. 
And of their first 10 batters today, the Mets have had five base runners. There they are. What do you call those hats? Hippie long stocky Nats hats? I don't know. They, they got the. Yeah. They got some Tyler Clifford bobbleheads already. They, those folks are special. They know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody. Yeah, well, the this fan appreciation month and some uh, some goodies have been made available to certain sections of the ballpark on certain nights. So they get a little sneak preview. So now if they buy tickets and come back Saturday. They can double up. Wilmer Flores a base hit opposite field first time up. Nats have turned one double play today. Flores has grounded into six of them. Dendecker good speed at first. He's five out of eight stealing. Don't forget about him. And Trinan still upstairs. I'm getting some tweets from some teachers that are letting their students watch the Nats game today. Well, hello there. That's what I'm talking about. You are our sudden nominations for teachers of the year. <laughs> <laughs> runner going, bat tossed to Trinan, and the runner is out at second. Blake Trinan, I don't know if he was ducking the bat or the throw or both. And somehow Jose Lobato manages to throw out Matt Dendecker. Well, the somehow was Danny Espinosa on the back end with a fantastic pick. Terry Collins going hit and run baseball here with Wilmer Flores. That's why he throws the bat at it, trying to put it in play. Watch the pick by Espinosa. Picks it, gets the tag right to Dendecker's foot. So a cut fastball from Lobato. And you saw that ball cutting toward the left field side. Espinosa reaches across his body, picks it, and puts a tag on. What a play by Danny Espinosa. Counts one and one now, and the leadoff man no longer on base. And then he jams Flores, and Desmond Bobbles loses the runner. That'll be his 24th error of the year. Man, Desmond looking back at the dirt kind of like a golfer looks at the green when he misses a putt must have been a tricky hop in here at the end slow roller look like it came up a little you know I talk about it all the time when the field's wet all grounds crews put the diamond dry on that turface and that turface is really gravelly and when you put that on the field you'll get some and you've heard it heard me say it before that super ball effect on a regular ground ball where you just have the soil the ball stays down and stays true, but when you put the diamond dry on, it's like putting a million little BBs on the field. So now all of a sudden the ball gets really live yeah. and it's hitting all those little rocks at the same time. You even saw the hop on Danny Espinosa as he picked the Lobatone throw, a little weird hop. Even Danny's double play ball that he got the in between hop earlier in the game where he had to back up. But that's the price you have to pay to get a field dry to be able to play on it. It's just not that real nice dirt surface. It's got. All kinds of live hops in it. I used to hate it, as you can probably tell. No balls, two strikes. Murphy. Line drive to Taylor in center, first time. And a snap throw down there. Lobaton made it fairly close with Flores scrambling back. Target well inside from Lobato. No, no, no. Did, he go? Did he go? Says Greg Gibson. Jim Wolf says no. Two balls, two strikes. Good block by Lobato. Keeping Flores at first in the double play in order. It's big when you got a sinker ball guy out there. Well, nobody has any trouble knowing what's going on with Greg Gibson communicating behind the plate. 2 2. Looking to the outside is trying in here. He had Murphy reaching and Daniel just getting a piece of that.
That ball pretty well hit out to center, but Taylor will drift for it. Okay, you students back in the classroom. Daniel Murphy 0 for 13 coming in. He's 0 for 2 today. So if you said 0 for 15, you get an A-plus from the booth. Oh, I was going to say 0 for 20. <laughs> Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one, look forward to special Miller moment later in today's game that is brought to you by Miller Lite. Hmm, I wonder what that could be. Stay tuned. Hmm, special Miller moment. Here's Lucas Duda. He singled up the middle first time up. Shift on. But it's not real dramatic. Espinoza playing him to pull less than the other infielders are. Franzen's well off the line, about 35 feet. Desmond up the middle, but Danny Espinoza for a second baseman. Really not that much in a pull position, so they must have charts that say when Duda hits the ball on the ground, he doesn't pull it that much. They have charts right now that says Lucas Duda shaves every. Well, he's got a beard, so shaves every month. I mean, when you're this late in the season playing your division, I always talk about it. The, the scouting reports are so extensive. And all those guys, including that guy right there, Mark Wiedemeyer, know exactly where to put these guys. Always, but especially when that data bank is so full late in the year. Yeah, 18th time these teams play each other. There's no shift they can grab that one. Stopping at second base is Flores and the Mets continue to gather base hits. Well, that was right on cue. Yeah, sometimes the hitter does a job and beats the shift. I'll tell you what, Sandy Alderson's got his first baseman for next year. He just signed a contract extension through 2017. Terry Collins going to be back next year, too, as a Mets manager, and there's a lot of pieces they have to fill, I think, from an offensive standpoint. Their pitching staff, when they get Matt Harvey back next year, Jacob DeGrom, Zach Wheeler, three top of the line starters for the rotation. They've solved the back end of their bullpen with Mejia. And now Terry Collins and Sandy Alderson have a nice farm system to go to. They got some guys on the rise in their farm system. But that whole free agent thing, they need to fill some holes in their offense. And the Mets have already publicly said they're not going to go out and spend much on the free agent market, which raises always some eyebrows in a place like New York. Well, the free agent thing's a crapshoot. It really is. Sure. I mean, you're, you're looking at a perfect example in the batter's box right now. You just don't know what you're going to get all the time when you go out and sign a big name. Oh, and two to Granderson, who has an RBI today, and that's inside. But I'm sure the Mets. Expected more than 225 the batting average. He only played 61 games with the Yankees last year. He's been hurt. So he, last three years he's at 232, 229, and now 225. Is that who Curtis Granderson is? If so, the Mets are paying a lot of money for that. Great pitch by Trinan. Third inning overall. He has been in the stretch a lot so far today.
so far. Didn't know we'd be telling you about our next five still today. So tonight there's a game two, Gio and Zach Wheeler. Now tomorrow the Nats haven't decided whether it's Fister or Taylor in game one or two. One of them will pitch each game, obviously. Jared Cozart, Andrew Heaney for the Marlins. Strasburg, Evaldi Saturday. Jordan Zimmerman, Henderson Alvarez on Sunday. There's Doug Fister. At Taylor Hill, along with Fister tomorrow. And Denny Espinosa batting eighth today. He's one for 13 with three walks career against Dylan G. Eight pitches, 18 strikes, first two innings for Dylan G. Espinosa will get around one and hook it into right center. Nationals have their second base hit. And Danny Espinosa, eight for 26 now over his last 12 plus games. But Danny Espinosa having a nice game so far. Remember the in-between hop for the 4-6-3 double play. The pick on the Jose Lobatone throw to second base and the tag. And now he walks up and gets himself a base knock. So even though it's only the third inning, the bottom of the third, Danny Espinosa having a nice game. Here's Blake Trinan has a couple of sacrifice bunts this year. With the Mets really creeping in and Murphy very aggressive at third. He ducked back from a high tight fastball. Deadens it, but not enough. Bunted it too hard, and the Mets turn it into a double play. 1 6 3 turned by Ruben Tejada. I think Matt Williams going to stroll out real slow and talk to first base umpire Chris Siegel about that call at first. The bunt right back to Dylan G. I mean, he had to go to second base. No choice. Nice play by G. Got rid of it quick. Tejada with a nice pickup right there. And did they get Blake trying in at first? Hey, Lucas Duda trying to sell it. I wonder if Tejada's feet were anywhere near second base either. I don't think Tejada was on the bag. And that's Flores covering right there. Excuse me, not Duda. Yeah, one six four. So we are going to have a challenge here. I, I don't know what they're challenging. Tejada wasn't on second base or, or, or really even near it. I don't think. Maybe I'm missing something. That wouldn't be the first time, but I, I thought he was off the base. Greg Gibson. When he caught the baseball. Let's check out the play at second. I, I don't know if that's going to show. Well, that was close. Looked like he was on there. Okay. And then challenging whether he's safe at first. What do you got? This should show it clear. Safe. Appears to be safe. Nice footwork by Tejada at second base. That was a, a tough sinker. Maybe Dylan G's best sinker all day that he just threw to second. Talking it over. Still talking it over. Umpire on the left is Chris Siegel, junior member of this crew who made that call. Have they named at second at the first base? Have they named the playoff Samsung headset holder guy lineup yet? Because I want to do that. 
I'd like to know what the basis is. Runner is safe at first. No double play. You know, the key to that play might have been Matt Williams. He was on his coach's camaraderie run the other day and his calf went. So he's got a bad calf. And he told me now when he goes out to argue a call, he's going to take a little bit longer because he's got a bad wheel. Gives the guys in the clubhouse a little more time to look at the replay. So, you know, it's game 157 for the skipper, too. And he's, he's not doing well. Maybe a little sympathy from the umpires. Yeah, well, it, it took him longer to get out there with the bad wheel. So here's Michael Taylor, and he takes one that's low. Counts even one one. And a breaking ball that he can't reach. Well, that's what he got Taylor with the first time. You got to keep throwing those till Michael makes the adjustment. And at the major league level, when you have a veteran pitcher like G, he's really not going to show you too much else until you show him you can hit that pitch. Maybe get you off it with something in, then go back to it. And the target is in. He didn't get it in very far. And Taylor hits it out to Neuenheis. That's the second out of the inning. It'll be up to Bryce Harper. Well, I'll tell you what, Nats Park is playing humongous because that ball was hit pretty well. You see the location mistake. This is supposed to back Michael Taylor off the plate to get back to the curveball to 2 2 count. He leaves it up over. Michael Taylor had the sound, it was up, and you saw Neuenheis go back, and then he had to come in on it because the wind is kind of blowing in from right field. It's a cold day. And this place is playing humongous. Bryce Harper hit one back to the mound first time. Dylan G got ahead and then had Bryce reaching. No swing, says Jim Wolf down at third. One nothing Mets, bottom of the third. Nationals have been out hit five to two. They play Bryce straight away, kind of pinch him toward the gaps a bit. 2 and 0. Oh. Dylan G, 28 years of age, career record, 40 and 34. This is 103rd start, 16th against the Nationals. And over that time, eight and seven with a 3.51 ERA against our ball club, facing them for the fourth time this year. Breaking ball drops back in. Pretty good pitch, 2-2. Did it come back all the way? I think that's what Bryce is thinking right now. Could have gone either way. It was close. That one way out in front of home plate. Good block by Juan Centeno. got jammed. It's going to carry to Ruben Tejada and the Nationals are gone in the third inning. A couple of hits, two stranded. The Mets by one into the middle innings.
got him to hit a comeback her first time. That time jammed him, got a little pop up to the shortstop. And obviously Bryce not happy with his first two ABs. Yeah, got in there with the sinker. And ball wasn't carrying to left. And Bryce obviously frustrated, and I think the skipper might have been a little frustrated too. Got the stank eye from the boss on that one. Yeah, you know, man. And we, we totally agree with him. It's not too much to ask ask for a guy just to run hard on a batted ball and get to first base, see what happens. So we turn the page and head for the middle innings. One nothing game, the Mets on top. Blake Schreinen, 45 pitches, 27 strikes. By the way, I saw a note about pitching today, how things have really changed. In 2009, five years ago, six teams had ERAs by starters under 4.10. This season, only eight teams have ERAs over 3.98. That's how pitching has made a dramatic turnaround over the last few seasons. And we talked about this earlier, Daniel Murphy hitting 293 coming into this game and he's in the top 10 in the league in hitting. It's really been interesting to watch the game come back in another direction of where it was in the late 90s and then eh, 2000 through 2009. Speaking of pitching and one of our young guys, Dan has more on Blake. Bob, I was talking to Blake Trinan a couple weeks ago, and he made what I thought was an interesting point. Down in the minor leagues, when he was down at AAA Syracuse, pitchers don't get to hit all the time. They have DHs, but when Trinan's been up here with the Nats, obviously he's been in the lineup, and he has taken some things away from when he's gotten at bats against like Tim Hudson and some of the other sinker ballers that he's faced. He's noticed that when they have that sinker and they've got a strong breaking ball as well, a slider specifically, how tough that makes it on opposing hitters. He really took note of that in his at-bats against Hudson, and that's kind of reinforced to him how important it is to have a secondary pitch, that slider. That's a pitch that he's worked on hard this year to improve. It was loopier before, now it's sharper. He feels more confident in it now than he did earlier in the season. It's kind of been a evolving process for him, but that's something that he's kind of taken from his time up here at the big leagues this year. Not just what he's learned on the mound, but what he's learned while in the batter's box as well. Yeah, it's probably something we don't think about that much. Maybe it's good for a pitcher every once in a while to get a bat in his hands and see how hard it is to hit good stuff. So they're not out there with good stuff trying to trick everybody. Desmond takes care of Tejada. Now Blake has a couple of quick outs in the top of the fourth inning. All right. You know the drill. Use hashtag Masson fan photos. And we will show a picture of you. Nameless in a future broadcast. It's brought to you by AT&T. Your friends will know who you are. We'll make one up for you. We got it. There's the catcher Centeno hit into that 463 double play first time up. Centeno. Second and third ground ball outs by Trinan. He would add another one in the second. And then didn't have any more until the two in this inning. So Blake has six outs on the ground right now. He can get that trend going through the middle part of the game. He'll be around for a while and give his teammates a chance to take the lead in this one nothing game. There's a chopper. Desmond on the charge. One, two, three. First baseman, shortstop twice. And coming up, bottom four, Ryan Zimmerman hit the ball hard first time up. LaRoche Desmond after him.
Questions. One to nothing, Matt's heading to the bottom of the fourth inning. Dylan G doing his thing. Blake Trinan doing a nice job so far, but this game has been about Danny Espinosa in the first third. And made a couple of nice plays. Talk about the ball bouncing a little different on the turface today. Tricky in between hop. Does a nice job of corralling that one and handing it to Ian Desmond. That was nice. Made a good tag play on a Jose Lobatone throw and then comes up and gets a base hit to right field in his first at bat. So having a nice game so far is the net second baseman, Danny Espinosa. Bottom of the fourth inning. Dylan G, 44 pitches, 28 strikes. He got Zimmerman to pull the ball first time. Ryan hit it sharply over to Daniel Murphy, and that's upstairs. Got some friends down the right field line. They, they it was a doubleheader today. They're not afraid to come to the ballpark and see two games. Nice. They, they, they usually have a few runs in them, too. So you left him tickets in the right field corner? No, right? the, the, the rally pigeons. They're right down the right field. Oh, them. They're sitting right on the field. Oh, okay. Well, they know there might be a lot of treats in between games. And there's two of them, so they know it's a double header. Although the one on the right is not looking so hot. <laughs> I don't know. He looks pretty healthy to me. The one I'm surprised he can get any lift. <laughs> Hey. Zimmerman looking pretty healthy. He's wearing out right field. He almost, so it's, since Ryan's come back, all of his hits the other way. He almost hit a pigeon. They're good for a hit. Look at that. You, you show the the pigeons. That's Homer and his wife. And I don't know what her name is. Her her, her name is opposite field single. Yeah, there you go. Homer and single. There you go. Look at that swing. Hit the ball hard his first time up to third. Dylan G said, "I'm gonna flirt with the inner half." He goes with a fastball away and Zim all over it. Next up, Adam LaRoche. Boy, you hope Zimmerman can be healthy for the playoffs. Because if you can make it all the way, who would have a better DH than the Nats? And LaRoche will gash one out to center. Zimmerman to second. He will keep on going. Ryan's to third on a deep single by Adam LaRoche. Two pigeons, two hits. It's just too easy. There they are. Little rally going. Well, good swing his first time up. I think he just missed another home run off Dylan G. Hit it straight up in the air to center field, but he was right on it. This time, it stays on the curveball nice. And let's watch Ryan Zimmerman run. You're wondering, would he go to third? But he's doing it in a way that's under control, not pushing himself. Nice job. I mean, if that's as good as Ryan Zimmerman gets for the playoffs, right there. Top speed, that's good enough. Here's Desmond tying run at third. Ian takes one in there, 82. What a chance for RBI number 90 right here. LaRoche has 91. Ian's been sitting on 89 for a while. And he will sky one out to center. This could be interesting. New and Heiss, it looks like it's deep enough. Ryan Zimmerman coming home, throw tailing up the line. The Nats tie the game, and then the Mets just fan on the relay, and LaRoche, a late start, is out at second. So that saves them an error, and the game is tied. That ball just came slamming off that rock behind home plate. And yeah, that's something that LaRoche couldn't really take into account, being aggressive right there, but a good at-bat by Ian Desmond. Deep enough to score Ryan Zimmer. And the reason I said it's going to be interesting, I was wondering if Ryan was going to go on this with nobody out. Medium fly ball, right? Not that deep. Is he going to go? But you look at the form, doesn't really push it, makes a little adjustment on the errant throw. And ladies and gentlemen, that's why pitchers back up home plate. Yeah, got a nice carom off the rocks, right to him. 8 1 6. On the out of LaRoche. So the base is empty, two outs for Kevin Franzen. And Ian Desmond does cash in RBN number 90. That ball first came off the bat. I wasn't sure it was going to go that far. And he got a pretty good piece of it to get it far enough. I like Ryan playing the first game of this, and I'm sure that's what Matt Williams' idea was that he'll have all afternoon and all evening to ice and to treat. Yeah and maybe even play the second game tomorrow against the Marlins where you get that full almost day and a half rest. 
But that was impressive. The first to third was it? But the swing, you know, that goes without saying. I mean, come yeah. on. But the first to third was impressive, and the tag on the sack fly was impressive as well. By the way, it's interesting. He goes into the dugout. First guy he talks to Steve Gobert, the assistant trainer. How's it feel? What it feel like when you took off? Ian says thanks for the RBI. Accelerating, decelerating, talking about everything. Two two. I'm not at all surprised that Desmond would come over. It's got nothing to do with the RBI, as I was jesting, but Ian checking on that guy who's played next to him for so many years to make sure he's good. Skipper went down there talking to him, just making sure everything's fine. You good? You know, how's everything? And I probably asked him, did you see the rally pigeons in right field? Because they were good for a run. 2-2. Two, two. It's pretty sharply hit by France and out to Tejada. So the Nats will use two singles, a sack fly by Desmond, RBI number 90. Zimmerman scores to tie it. I don't know if they were all sleepy or what, but we saw this and okay, something's going to distract Dave. There's no way he's going to keep that lead. The other guys are going kumbaya behind him, holding hands and just handing one over to number 16. Not sure what was up about that yeah, approach. Not sure what that was all about. Two, three, and four, very content to be runners up. You know, five more races left in the year for the presidents. Decided to now don't tell me feelings are starting to get hurt about who wins the president's race. So everybody wants to finish second together. Come on. Sure, there was some late night thinking to that one. Those three may be resting for the nightcap. How tough can it be to race every nine hours? It's up. Your head's not that good. Dylan G. <laughs> Thank you for that. I've and that's ground ball number eight by Blake Trinan, including four in a row. Well, that's what we saw, right? The stocking cap that, that those people right down below us, that's what they were wearing. It wasn't a Pippi Long stocking Nats hat. It was the fantastic finale stocking cap yeah. presented by Coca-Cola. First 25,000 fans, September 28th, 135 star. You'll get that hat, the one we showed you. Then guys, if you want to look like a big, tough baseball fan, strap on one of those. There they are. That's what we call the promo section. They have the Tyler Clippard bobblehead right there. See. They got the Pippi Longstocking Nats hat right there. High strike to Matt Dendecker, Blake Trinan on a bit of a roll here, trying to keep it going. He's retired five in a row. Then he goes 86 on the change. He walked Den Decker to lead off the third. He was caught stealing with Wilmer Flores at the plate and a 1 1. Up the middle, and the Mets have their sixth base hit.
They about hit the net 6 4. Wilmer Flores is single and reached on an error. You know, when you're left handed and you're facing a guy with a plus sinker and he's a right hander, it's. You know, most lefties are good low ball hitters. So the reason Blake trying needs that slider coming back the other way or a change up that mimics that sinker is because if you're a left handed hitter and you know a guy's got a good sinker you just drop the barrel on the baseball even if it is a good sinker where that sinker comes into play is right on right a right handed hitter. That's tough because it's coming in on your hands slider the other way helps. But for a right hander versus a right hander with a great sinker mid 90s you can just lean on that. Where it comes into play is against the guys on the other side of the plate, the left-handers. Because, okay, you're throwing a sinker. I like the ball low. And if you're a left-hander that can move the ball around a little bit, you're not dead pull, then you just take it back up the middle like Dan Decker did right there. Go the other way with it. So is Xavier Cedeno working? Wilmer Flores, the hitter. And maybe Cedeno for Murphy and Duda. All that said, I think Blake Trinan's going to be a great major league pitcher, and that slider is a work in progress, and it's something that has gotten better and will even improve from where it is right now. So these are as a starter numbers. His seven start of the year. He's never given up more than seven hits and never more than two earned runs as a starter this year. Had a bit of a glitch at Pittsburgh back in May when he walked five. But lowest rookie ERA all time in the franchise. STG, and he's right behind. The great Steve Rogers. And right in front of the great Hal Dews. He paid his dues before he got to the big league. Middle name Clubhouse. <laughs> Joe Hesketh, number four on that list. I think he pitched for the Expos, a little time with the Dodgers. Well hit. Mets have centered a bunch of balls today against Blake Trinan. Two on one out for Murphy and. With the left hander working we'll see if Matt Williams just stays with Blake for a while here just clapped his hands in encouragement so. No trip to the mound here so when you're right handed the sinker if it's really sinking you have to pull your hands in tight to get the barrel to the baseball but you see where that one is a, a good sinker is going to be in this region right there and now it's hard for a right handed hitter to get to it that one trying and left up it didn't have a lot of sink to it so an easier at bat for Wilmer Flores to get the barrel to the ball yeah there's Murphy. Pretty good rip at 92 up. Hands behind the Nats dugout, clapping for a ground ball here. Trident has eight ground ball outs today. Murphy's hit in the air twice to center. Duda on deck big sequence in the game here fifth inning for Blake Trinan. Oh, so he needs that good sinker for the ground ball right here. That was a good pitch right there to do or to to Murphy. Locked him up. Ooh, it looked like a swing from up here but Jim Wolf says no good pitch. And that's what I'm talking about the slider going the other way down and into Murphy did he hold up. 
close. Yeah. Depends on the angle. That's not the same angle that Jim Wolf had at third base. He thought he didn't go. Murphy lines it to right. Tough play, Harper. It's way beyond Bryce's reach. Dendecker will score. Flores around third. He will hold as the throw comes into second. So the Mets retake the lead. Nothing at all cheap about the hits they've had today. Line drives all over the yard. Now this one's elevated. And Daniel Murphy doesn't miss pitches like this. Watch belt tie. Drops the barrel on it. I'll tell you what, Tim Tuffle had a chance to send Wilmer Flores. Bryce Harper threw this all the way into second base. Flores was coming hard around third, and Tuffle put the brakes on. But that's one of those long throws from the fence into second that if he kept waving him, Flores had a chance to score. So Blake Trinan will be done after four and a third. Xavier Cedeno has been ready for left handers Duda and Granderson straight ahead. Here's a good story for you about Cedeno, who was released by the Rockies back in 2010. He had topped out a double-A ball to that point, and after he got released, he went back home to his native Puerto Rico and just kind of sat around for four to six months trying to figure out what he wanted to do next. He wasn't getting signed by anybody. He decided to play winter ball in Puerto Rico that year and was starting one day and then coming out of the bullpen the next day just to showcase himself. It wasn't easy. But he was doing anything that he could to get noticed by scouts. He got signed by the Astros. Then, within a year, was back up in the big leagues. He made his first, uh, put on his first big league uniform, actually here at Nats Park, when the Astros played the Nationals. In the last couple of years, he's been up with the Nats in September, pitching in big games. So, really a good story about, about how Cedeno was out of professional ball, and then within just a year, guys, was back all the way up to the big leagues and pitching in big league games. At 28 years of age now, he's been up and down a lot. Sometimes he came up here without pitching in a ball game for a couple of days here and there. So he gets the lefty lefty matchup with Lucas Duda, who's 0 for 2 career against him with a strikeout. It's a great story about never giving up. That's picked him up as a minor league free agent April 23rd of last year. After the season had already started. He had pitched five games for Houston, struggled a bit. Went to Syracuse, 39 games, and made it back to the big leagues. Two balls, no strikes. Infield in in a 2-1 game, top of the fifth inning. I'll tell you what, if Xavier does nothing else the rest of the season, his strikeout of Adrian 
Gonzalez in Los Angeles <laughs> was worth the price of admission and worth the price of calling him up. I mean, by all accounts, that game should have ended right there, and he threw three nasty sliders and struck him out. And Duda pumping on 3 and 0. Oh. He thought he was getting a fastball. He did. Couldn't get over it. And fouled it straight back. James Duda gets a pop up. Desmond and Franzen out. Zimmerman in. Ian's got the call. And the ball for a big second out. Battling back from 3 0. Now for the Achiever in UPNC Bank with our minor league report. Counting down the top prospects. Number six, Matt Skoll. Out of Georgia Tech, so many good ball players have come out of there. Veritek, Garcia Parra, Kevin Brown, others. 241 at Harrisburg. So we will count down all the way to number one between now and Sunday afternoon. Well done, Matt Skoll. Pretty sure I know who number one is. But that was not an easy play for Ian Desmond right there. Ryan Zimmer was playing deep. Kevin Franzen, that was behind his head. So it was all Desmond with the wind blowing. He kept his feet moving, made a nice play. That wasn't as simple as he just made it look. Now here's Curtis Granderson facing Sedeno for the first time. First inning RBI single he pulled the right struck out looking in the third. That's a good fastball, 90 with some pop. Granderson pulls it right field corner. That's going to drive in two. Harper to second, holding Granderson to a single, but the Mets lead 4 1. And all those runs charged to Blake Trinan. Well, Stadier did a nice job of coming back from 3 0 to get Lucas Duda to pop up. And after throwing a fastball in for strike one, he threw a slider down the way, and Granderson all over it went down and pulled it in the right field corner. Make this a four to one game. Nice piece of hitting by Curtis Granderson. That wasn't a bad pitch. That'll bring in another lefty, Kirk Neuenheis. So Blake Trinan goes four and a third, eight hits, four runs, a walk, a strikeout. 64 pitches, 42 strikes. Got seven days rest that Blake had. It's tough for a sinker ball guy to pitch when you're that strong. You could tell. He was a little stronger than normal. Solid contact there. New Heist first base hit of the day. Well, the Mets are up to double digit hits already. Nobody throwing in the Nats bullpen. This inning belongs to Cedeno. They'll hit for him in the bottom of the fifth. Faces the right hander Ruben Tejada for the first time. And Tejada one for two. He's pulled it twice. Up the middle and Cedeno knocks it down calmly. Inning over. 
But the Mets pick up three on five fifth inning hits and have a 4 1 advantage. Ball game. Nats have a ways to go to get back into this one. Lobatone, Espinosa, and nobody warming up in the bullpen. So maybe Cedeno hits and stays. We'll see. Lobatone struck out swinging by Dylan G. First time up. To my uh, log here, Xavier Cedeno has never had a big league at bat. So we'll see. I actually think I just saw him walk down the tunnel to grab a helmet and a bat. Yeah, where's the bat rack? Yeah. Where do I get a helmet? And Lobaton with a great swing out to center field. That'll bring in Danny Espinosa, who has a hit today. Maybe Matt's looking into the future and seeing a couple of runners on base that Cedeno could bunt ahead. A uh, nice swing by Lobaton. Nice adjustment. Pull swing. Tapped one foul down the first baseline. Then says, I'm going to make the adjustment and go the other way. Nicely done. Espinosa got around one and hooked it for a base hit. Okay, Nate Sherholtz has just popped out of the dugout, so evidently the call going to Jerry Blevins because he can get ready in a hurry. Maybe the base runner changed Matt's thinking there. Matt's throwing some left handed hitters at G here, fifth inning. That's way inside, 101. One base runner away from getting the time run into the box. Espinosa pulls it, base hit. Lobatone had to hold back with that ball near him. And Nate Sheerholtz will bat with two men aboard. 
Well, the good day for Danny Espinoza continues. Doing a nice job on defense. A couple of hits on offense. So two for two in the Partridge family in right field. Like, so you see them. If it's any indication by how many pigeons are on the field, the Nats are about to have a 15 run inning. My goodness, they're everywhere. There's one in the infield. And there's five in right field. And there, the Partridge family. And I think that's Homer. He's on the infield. And he wants a sign from Tony Tarasco. Well, we like it when things are busy on the infield. Maybe this is the ultimate compliment to John Turner. <laughs> Birds really like his turf. <laughs> and we have every color pigeon you could imagine, too. I mean, how many how many teams can say that? Well, some cities have Oktoberfest. And we've got a little pigeon fest going here. Danny Espinosa just kicked dirt at Homer. He's walking right to him. Nate Sherholtz has four career hits against Dylan G, including a double and a triple. He goes up hacking. Look out. No, I, he just, just, just smooth enough. Just get a toe hold. Yeah. Sheer holds jammed. Tried to get his hands inside that one, and it's strike two. And Nate's always had good numbers for some reason against the Mets. Still hunting his first pinch hit as a national. Had a couple for the Cubs this year. Including a home run. Rips it. That's a base hit. Lobatone being sent by Bob Henley. The Nats are right back in the game as the bottom of the order delivers three hits in a row. Here's your first pitch hit. Isn't that a big one? RBI single for Nate Sherholtz. And folks, the line is moving. Nice at bat. Had some good hacks before that. Couldn't keep it fair. Finally gets one on the fair side for a base hit. The curveball right there from Dylan G. And Sherholtz on it. Scores a run, first and second. Espinosa has to do the dance. Lucas scatters the whole Partridge family down there for a run. Yeah. Lucas do the thing. I just need to play a little more to my right and I'd have some of these. There they go. See you later, boys. Top of the order, Michael Taylor. Even with the grass at third, Murphy aware of Taylor's speed. Do you take a rookie leadoff guy here and try to lay down a bunt? Yes, and he pulled the bat back. Strike one, 75 on the breaking ball. Nobody out that that's playing for a big game tying inning here. That's a ball. There's a balk, and the runners won't have to be sacrificed to second and third. Well, that's a thank you very much. And watch what he does right here. Just drops the baseball. Dropped it against his leg. How about that? Takes care of the sacrifice. Now Michael Taylor has to change hats and think about driving in runs. And he'll drive in at least one. That ball on the ground in front of Dendecker. Two runners coming home almost together. And... There's no call on the second one. They're evidently both safe. Espinosa and Scherholz. And Nate was right behind Danny. The game is tied. Well, 
Danny went back to tag up just in case Dendecker makes a sliding catch. Nate Sherholtz read it perfectly, so he was right on top of Espinosa. Nice swing by Michael Taylor. Stays on the Dylan G curveball. That's what G's been having success against Taylor with. But look at Sherholtz. He read it early. Espinosa went back to ta tag up just in case there was a catch. And good send by Bob Sendley. Playing both of them. And this game's tied. Four hits in a row by the Nationals. Still nobody out. And Michael Taylor goes from three to five big league RBIs. And almost all of his damage is a big leaguer against the Mets. There's Bryce Harper. We'll see if he can put an A-B together here. Taylor back in diving. These pigeons are no joke, Carp. I'm telling you. Don't even sleep on the power of the pigeon. We've showed him twice. Seven of them now. We've showed him twice today. The Nats scored one run and now three. Taylor running. And the throw right there. Absolutely perfect by Juan Centeno. I like the aggressive nature. I like the step on the gas pedal mentality. Looked like he got a decent enough jump. Maybe slid too soon. That's all I can see right there. Watch when he leaves his feet. That's going to slow him down. Gets a nice round of applause going back to the dugout. Try to do the swim move right there and take the left hand away, but might have went into his slide a little bit too soon. I'm looking at his skid marks from up here. And on a wet surface when you slide early, you're going to stop. And I think that's what happened to Taylor. Ball one to Bryce Harper, full windup now for Dylan G. And of course, the next guy always gets a hit after you lose the base runner. That's the Nationals' ninth hit of the day. Five consecutive batters have singled here. Next up, a guy, yeah, with a single, Ryan Zimmerman. So the line score 4 10 0 Mets, 4 9 1 Nats, and only one out here in the fifth. So Blake Trinan's off the hook. Breaking ball, a good one to Zimmerman from Dylan G. I'll tell you what, I don't know if G's getting tired or they just got him in the stretch, but the stuff is a lot more flat than it was early, especially the curveball. It was sharp early on in this game. Now it's kind of rolling in there. Now Harper running. Zimmerman pops it up. Bryce sees the infielders and scrambles back. Two down. All right, only one day left until Masson's final social media weekend. It's presented by Cox all weekend long. Masson will be on site at the fairgrounds. Rewarding fans with great prizes, so visit Masson Nationals on Facebook and follow at Masson Nationals on Twitter and use hashtag I back the Nats to join the conversation. Adam LaRoche is one for two today. Fly ball to center, base hit to center. Key hit in the fourth inning got Zimmerman to third for the Desmond sack fly. And LaRoche gets under one. Curtis Granderson waiting for it, and Adam LaRoche narrowly missing home run number 27. But a big inning for the Nats. Three runs to tie it on five hits. For Shirley, Keith, Danny. Nice job, guys.
by the D.C. Lottery. The D.C. Lottery presents the Friday Fun Concert Series at the fairgrounds. Two hours pre and post game each Friday. It's fun to play the D.C. Lottery. Anything that says postseason or playoffs or champions flying off the shelves in the racks right now at the Nats team stores here at the ballpark. Boys are back even. Jerry Blevins trying to keep it that way. A fastball curveball changeup from Blevins. 63rd appearance, ERA at 5.13. He's been fantastic against lefties all season long. Lefties hitting just 163 against Jerry Blevins. Juan Centeno. Mets about to hit for their pitcher. Infielder Josh Satin waiting. Lefty lefty matchup right here. Blevins ahead, and that's low and away. Good breaking ball. And that's why he's so effective against lefties as a crossfire guy. First of all, he's going to step right at you if you're left handed. Second of all, watch where this curveball starts behind and then goes to the other side of the plate. Yeah, Nissan tracking a beauty. There's a 1 2 to the catcher. First fastball, 2 2. Comes out of the bullpen, gets his first man. Well, that was just a professional job by Jerry Blevins. Threw the curveball for the strike, then went fastball in to Centeno, moved his feet a little bit, and could have repeated with the fastball in, but decided to go to the other side of the plate after he backed him off with another nice curveball. That was well done. Former Cal Bear, Josh Satin, the hitter. Facing Jerry Blevins for the first time, and that just misses. So Dylan G goes five innings, gives up nine hits, four runs. Strike call, 1-1. One, one. Through 72 pitches, 49 strikes. Good fastball by Blevins at 91. Another good sequence work. It went two seam fastball, just missed for ball one. Then change up for strike one, and another two seamer on the block away for strike two. Mets box, and just like the Nets, they had a five hit, three run fifth inning. Granderson RBI single back in the first. He drove in two of those three in the fifth. And Daniel Murphy finally breaking up an 0 for 15 and RBI double in that inning. Sat in a lock like Kevin Franz in the sense that he gets better sometimes with two strikes. He fights you. Take a little bit out of his swing. Make the two strike adjustment. Think about going the other way. All things that good two strike hitters do.
2 2. Top of the order next. And a swing and a miss. And Josh Satin is 0 for his last 16. Blevins with a couple of swinging K's in the sixth. Yeah, going right after Satin, too. Not messing around. 3 2 fastball, and he threw it by him. Middle away. I right, sat and thinking about something inside, just pulled off that of hair. Nicely done. Matt Dendecker facing Blevins for the first time. He's had a good day, a walk, a single, a run. is inside to it all. Adam LaRoche should go backhand. Race to the bag. He's there. And the Mets go one, two, three. Blevins at top of the sixth. He's retired ten straight hitters and struck out seven of them. Jerry Blevins is locking it in. Thinking about October. and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Washington Nationals. On this beautiful field, the Nats have tied the ball game. Now they'll try to take the lead the bottom of the six against Buddy Carlisle. 2015 Nats Plus memberships offer experiences, rewards, and access. Purchase a fuller half season plan now, and you can also secure tickets for postseason games next week. 202 675 Nats. Nationals.com slash 2015. Not too late. And so for the Mets, it is 36 year old Buddy Carlisle. And pretty much a fastball and a cutter. Oh, the fastball 84% of the time. The cutter right around 13. Occasional curveball, occasional change, but really a two pitch guy. Did not pitch in the big leagues from 2009 till 11, and then from 2011 with the Yankees until this year with the Mets. 
26 game, a 159 ERA. Ian Desmond's 0 for 2 against him this year. 90 running inside. Desmond, a perfect day. Single sack fly, RBI number 90. Ten more than all of last year. Have to really get on his horse and giddy up to get a hundred. But you never know. LaRoche at 91, Desmond 89. Worth 81. Trio green light would be a good start on getting <laughs> close to 100. Rendon 81. It's upstairs. Lead runs aboard. That'll bring in Kevin Franzen, who has not faced Buddy Carlisle before. Here's the Nats box. Only hit in the first two innings, a Desmond single. Espinosa one in the third. Zimmerman single, LaRoche single, sack fly Desmond in the fourth, and then the consecutive hits by Lobatone, Espinosa, Sheerholtz, Taylor, and Harper. The big blow, Michael Taylor's two run single, and the Nats able to tie the game. Nate Sheerholtz, a big pinch hit, his first as a Nat, and RBI attached to that one. That's a strike call on the inside edge to Franzen, who has flied to right and grounded to short. One outer edge. Ball game started at 107 today. Looked horrible all morning. Turned into a, just a cloudy, cool afternoon. It's the three o'clock hour now here. First game of two. And the Nets, even with the Mets, 4 4. Swing and a miss. Franzen fell behind, had to hack. One out. Inside the numbers with Jeep. So the Nationals now have passed Oakland in winning percentage. They have the same wins, a couple of fewer losses than the A's. And everybody on that list should be playing in October. What a ride it's been. 98, 86, and this time around, who knows how many. I don't know if win a maximum of 98 games. And they're still on pace. I know nobody ever calls it anymore, Carl, but Buddy Carlisle is not even coming close to a stop right now when he comes set. Kind of rolling right through it. And that makes it tough for a base dealer to read if a guy doesn't come set. And he might, he might have just tried to quick pitch Jose Lobaton last time, but a little better set that time. Yeah. And then a delayed steal, and Desmond has done it again. Number 24 for the delayed steal artist, Ian Desmond. It's at least three or four of those this year. 24 for 29. Now watch Ian Desmond shuffle, shuffle, go. Well, it's, I mean, right there is just such an instructional video for young kids, young baseball players on what the delay steal is. And a lot of times you say, take care of the delay as a middle infielder, and you're talking about the slower guys, the guys that aren't burners. But I think the delay steal, even with fast guys, is very effective because nobody expects a fast guy with 23 stolen bases, now 24, to go with a delay steal. That's generally designed for the slower guys to catch the middle infielders or the catcher napping. Roy Desmond's one steal and two home runs away from 25-25. It's just shuffle, shuffle, go. Watch top of the screen, Ian Desmond. Shuffle, shuffle. Middle infielders head down. Did you see that? Two and one to Lobato now in the lead run scoring position. Okay, stay with me. I'm going to circle one more Flores right here. So we watched Ian Desmond last time. 
Watch Wilmer Flores right here. Just watch him cue on him this whole time. Watch his head after the pitch. Goes down, right? Oops. That's all it takes. Even though he wasn't covering, I'm sure the same way it happened with Ruben Tejada, that's how you catch a middle infielder napping. So it's not always catching the catcher falling asleep. It's the guys covering the base, too. You see the guy's head go down. You see a one pitch. You're looking at that. Okay, I'm going to try it. Lobatone Jan, then he pops it to short center. New and high sin. Second out, sixth inning. And then here comes Danny Espinosa. The Nats have a lefty warming up. Number nine spot is next. So if they have thoughts about not pitching to Espinosa, they'd have to deal with a pinch hitter. And Tyler Moore to the on deck circle as we speak. The pitcher warming up is lefty Matt Thornton. Espinosa, pair of singles that he's pulled today. That pitch, pitch ended up way down and in. And kind of tying it all together, Carver, you do a delay steal for you young coaches, young players at home. Maybe the guy's real quick to the plate. He's a 1-0. You can't get a good jump on him. He's got a good move to first. He's quick to the plate. The catcher throws well. Well, I can't steal, right? How am I going to get the second? Tie game in the bottom of the sixth? He's quick to the plate. I'll try delay steal. Love that play. Danny Espinosa facing Buddy Carlisle for the first time. Trying to get together with Juan Centeno, who doesn't play behind the plate that much. It's only his ninth game at the big league level this year. Good take by Danny on 0 2. Close. Kind of quick pitched him right there. Try to sneak that fastball by him in an 0 2 count. Right down the middle. Looked like Danny Espinosa was guessing. A couple of K's after a leadoff walk. This one into the seventh inning. The bullpens will decide this 4 4 game.
Barry Blevins will still be working when this inning gets underway. Well, the dollar fun keeps on coming just south of the Capitol here at the ballpark. Dollar ice cream tomorrow. That's the 105 game. So join us at the ballpark. Dollar ice cream novelty is available for purchase until the sixth inning. Some restrictions apply. 202 675 Nats. Visit nationals.com slash specials. That's the one o'clock game tomorrow. And it's supposed to be nice tomorrow, too. The high of 79 tomorrow and sunny. Nice. Today, not ice cream. Weather. Ice cream weather. Today is chilly weather. It's like chicken soup weather. Wilmer Flores, two for three. A couple of singles around an error. A lot of these right handed batters facing Jerry Blevins for the first time. They just don't get to see him in his usual role as a situational lefty versus lefty guy. But Murphy and Duda are on deck. That's why Jerry's still in the ball game here. Had it gone down one more hitter in the sixth, the Nats would have pinch hit and Thornton would be pitching. Two and one. These three hitters have five hits today. Right in there, two and two. Well, I think, you know, moving forward to the playoffs, Jerry Blevins, we showed his numbers against lefties this year. You know, who are you matching up against? What are his numbers against specific lefties on the team that Nats are going to play in the first round? So if it's the Pirates, does he have good numbers against Ike Davis, Pedro Alvarez? You know, Polanco, Snyder, the Giants, you know, you turn Pablo Sandoval around to the right side. He's a 200 hitter right handed. You know, Brandon Belt, Crawford, guys like that, the Dodgers, Gonzalez, Crawford. So you take his exact numbers, the matchup numbers against these guys, and you say, okay, we're going to match him up with whoever and whoever they play. That, that's how intricate the postseason roster becomes. And the way Jerry Blevins has been pitching against lefties all year, he could be. And probably should be the situational guy against a, a, a yeah. big left hander in a big situation. Speaking of postseason rosters, we talked about this a little the other day. I get a lot of questions from fans. When do you have to set your roster? It's up to the commissioner's office, but it's the day of game one. You have right up until sometimes 10 a.m. or noon, the day of your first game to set your roster for that series. And if a guy gets hurt, it has to be a pitcher for a pitcher or a position player for a position player. And then, the and then you can reset every round as you go. But the guy that gets hurt has to miss the whole next round if they advance. And, and I heard that the rosters have to be set by Thursday afternoon. That's a little earlier than usual. I'm talking to Matt about that yesterday before the game during batting practice. And I mean, it gets down to ballparks you're playing in. Obviously who you're playing, even maybe even the weather. I mean, that's sure. I mean, you're talking about when you get down to the nitty gritty of how you're going to form your roster for a five game playoff. And even your rotation, Carp, how are you going to set it up? I mean, with the double headers now, Strasburg and Zimmerman set perfectly with five days rest for games one and games two. But all of that depends on who you're going to play. Are you playing the Giants? Are you playing the Pirates? Pirates still could catch St. Louis. Yeah. Or are you playing the Cardinals? Ugh. All of that, I mean, it all goes into account how you're going to set up your starting rotation, your bullpen, your bench versus their relievers. You know, even start times. Who suits better at a 4 o'clock start with shadows? I mean, you get that into detail. Every little finite thing matters, especially when there's so much left to chance in a five-game series. It's really just a crapshoot. Ball's got to bounce your way. Quite a battle here. Murphy is 0 for 2 career against Blevins. A couple of ground outs. And he can't reach that curveball. Jerry Blevins has struck out three of the five batters he's faced. That's the big roundhouse curveball. It's been good. 
you know, Murphy thinking that's going to be a strike. It's nowhere near a strike. Another good job against the lefty by Jerry Blevins. DC area Toyota dealers want to help children and their families by making a donation of 37 bucks to the children's in at NIH for every strikeout by a Nats pitcher this year. He has struck out Lucas Duda both times he's faced him. Duda has two hits up the middle today and a pop up to short. First pitch breaking ball upstairs. Sixty third appearance for Jerry Blevins. Ties him with Soriano and Storin. Clippard has 73. Always busy, always good. Front door breaking ball, it stayed inside. A bit inner edge Nissan will track it. Yeah, due to all systems go to O count, wants a fastball, gets a fastball, just a little bit too high. And that pitch track shows that that second breaking ball could have been called a strike. Duda, nine double play balls this year on the ground. 91 in there, the count's even. Sit the curveball all the way. You see a power hitter, a guy with 28 home runs, take a 2 1 fastball right down the middle. He's telling everybody he was sitting on a curveball. Right down the heart. Look at that, pitch number four. Go ahead and count. And another breaking ball, another strikeout, two down. Boy, that's just a case of Jerry Blevins executing and maybe Lucas Duda guessing wrong a couple of times. Throws a 2-1 fastball. Then here comes the big hook with two strikes and Duda way out in front. And Jerry Blevins' mastery of lefties continues. Bit of a history with Curtis Granderson. Tell you about that in a moment. Steve McCaddy on his way out. So two strikeouts a grounder, a walk, this inning, two strikeouts. Jerry Blevins trying to bridge this thing to the bottom of the seventh. When the Nats will have the pitcher's spot due up first. So Soriano working. But no uh, right-handed batters for a while. Granderson, then Neuenheis. Curtis Granderson knows Blevins from the American League, two for 13 against him, with a home run and seven strikeouts. First two down, tie game, top seven. Just pitched inside effectively here. Yeah, throw that fastball in for a strike in. For a lefty, it's hard to get to that curveball away because you're really thinking about 91, 92 on the inner half. Trying to paint and weigh in, just missed.
15 pitches to get a one, two, three, sixth. A walk and two strikeouts, making this a long inning now, a 3 0 count. And Granderson pumping on 3 0. He has his third hit of the day. He's pulled it three times. There's one more left handed batter here, Kirk Neuenheis. Well, I like the 3 0 green late by Terry Collins. You know, you got a guy with 19 home runs, not guaranteed a 3 1 fastball, so he gets a 3 0 heater. And like you said, third hit of the day. Kirk Neuenheis will face Blevins for the first time. in there. Neuenheis has pulled it three times today. Two ground balls. And a base hit to right. <laughs> Not exactly where Lobaton was set up. He had to reach to his right to get it because it was right down the middle. Might have been on the inner half, and this really sets up the curveball in an 0-2 count. You can see where Lobatone slides here. He was away on 0-1. Doesn't show much until the last instant. And then the fastball. And Jerry Blevin strikes out the side. He strikes out five hitters in two innings. And this one gets to the seventh inning stretch at Nationals Park. Yeah, just a challenge fastball. Thought he might go with the curve. Maybe Neuenheis was thinking the same thing. A little fist pump from Jose Lobaton. Nicely done. The stretch is brought to you by Hyundai here at Nationals Park. Well, they battle back from a one-run deficit and a three. See if they can take the lead. Tied at four. And we're going to show you how this game became tied at four. Go back to the fifth inning. Nate sure holds off the bench. Knock. By a diving Lucas Duda. That scored Jose Lobatone. And Michael Taylor keep the line moving. Drops one in front of Matt Dendecker. Great read by Nate Sherholtz. Right behind Danny Espinosa. Couple of RBIs, and that's where we're at. Four to four ball game. Carlos Torres for the Mets, their third pitcher, bottom seven coming up. Seventy first appearance of the year, ERA right at three. 
Roy lefties don't do much against him. So that's interesting. Steven Souza Jr., right hander, will be the pinch hitter. Well, sometimes when a guy throws a cutter as much as Torres does, he throws it almost half the time. You know, righties have a better chance because it's it, it's kind of cutting away from them where it's cutting into a lefty on their on their handle. Steven Souza Jr. 0 for 6 as a pinch hitter. He has two hits and 18 big league at bats, including a monstrous home run in Atlanta on the last road trip. And he takes it low. The count's even 1 1. Yeah, that was a monster, too. Yeah. That was a monster mash, what he did in that game. That was the only run the night Blake Trinan pitched the night after the clincher. Locked up on that. That's a cutter, right? When he realized it was a cutter, he tried to stop too late. No some outing for Jerry Blevins, 38 pitches, 22 strikes in two innings, with a hit, a walk, and five strikeouts. Souza bats for him. Two balls, two strikes. Congratulations to Steven, by the way, the Nationals minor league organizational player of the year this year. Destroyed triple A pitching at Syracuse all season long. And Lucas Giolito, the organizational pitcher of the year. Inside the numbers with Jeep and some of the numbers attached to it. Souza drove in 75 at Syracuse. Giolito, Hagerstown heading for high A ball at least next year, winning 10 games with a great ERA. Souza, powered by Torres there with the cutter. And with more on Steven Jr., here's Dan. Bob, I talked to Souza the other day about. What has kind of been the key for him over these last few years? He had a rough go of it, and he'll admit that down in the minor league levels a few years ago, but he's really come back in a big way. And he said that the, the key for him has just been that he's been able to get out of his own head. He was doing too much thinking, and he would go through stretches where he'd have two hits like five days in a row, and then he'd go 0 for 4, and he'd talk to the coaches and say, what are you seeing? What am I doing wrong? And the coaches would say, there's nothing to see. You're going to have bad games from time to time. Susan said that failure is a big part of this game and you have to learn how to deal with that and it took a took him a little while to deal with it But he says that he's matured a little bit he's been able to put the bad games behind him And he didn't have that many bad games down at the minor league levels this year guys Yeah, it's funny when Aaron Barrett came back. He told me it looked like Sousa got two hits every day We've got the whole analysis paralysis route where you're just breaking down your swing way too much worrying about all the little things Have an athlete like Steven Souza Jr. Just see it hit it. Keep it simple. Slapped up the middle to his left Tejada. And Michael Taylor is one for four today. The Nets second game tomorrow night, a 705 start. First 20,000 fans receive a Nationals team poster presented by Credit Union National Association. Get your game tickets, 202-675-NATS, or visit nationals.com slash tickets. Poster night tomorrow night. Yuris Familia and Josh Edgen, the righty, the lefty. Tyler Clippard for the Nats. They've got seven, eight, nine due up in the eighth. Breaking ball in there for a strike to Bryce Harper, who against Torres is two for nine career with a home run. One, one. Bryce a base hit up the middle last time. Right after Taylor had been caught stealing. He was running when Zimmerman popped up and then LaRoche flew out to end that inning. But the Nats put three on the board. Ball two to Bryce. Torres, 31 year old right hander. With the White Sox. 
most of his career. Colorado for 31 games two years ago and 33 for the Mets last year. Careful right here. Oh, yeah. 71st game this year. He's given up 11 home runs. Bryce tried to make it five to four. Well, he got the cutter up exactly where he wanted it. He might have pulled off a hair, but that was right where he was looking. Fighting it off to stay alive. Four four game bottom of the seventh two two to Harper. He made an offer and a breaking ball no swing says Jim Wolf and the count goes full. Take Harper on for the second time today. We'll see if Matt Williams turns him loose with two strikes or rather two outs again. Well, Bryce with one stolen base on the air. He's been caught twice. Now would be as good a time as any for number two. Zimmerman one for three with an opposite field single outside. Another example of a guy kind of rolling through his stock, Torres, not really coming set. Trying to quick pitch Zimmerman and Harper. Ryan is three for six career against Torres. He popped up Ryan in the seventh inning here Tuesday night. That impresses you about Zimmerman coming out of a layoff. I mean, not just the fact that he's getting hits, but the timing. Breaking balls away, fastballs away. Comes out not trying to pull anything. Whatever the pitcher gives him, that's where he's taking it. I mean, most guys that takes a while, right? It's crazy how good he is when he first comes back. Yeah, most people take a minute. Not Ryan. And I guess this would be a good time to mention with Harper being held a lot of room on the right side. Lead run aboard Harper good lead. One one pitch he's holding. And that's well outside. And Ryan went fishing there it's one and two. He reached that one. Well, that was the extendo off the end of the at bat. Stay alive. I mean, Torres's cutter is just taking off like a frisbee right now. I mean, it looks like a fastball. It looks like it's going to have played away in the last two or three feet. It's just hanging a left hand turn. Two and two. Tickets sold for this one, 28,629. The intimacy of this ballpark today, priceless. It's all about tickets sold. 
I'll say one thing about the Nationals compared to other ballparks we visit. They never, as they say, paper the house. It's always very accurate. With the runner going on two and two, Zimmerman had a pretty good swing at it. Nats came into the ball game averaging almost 32,000. They're seventh in the National League. 31,861 was the average. Two two, and Zimmerman goes the other way. Wilmer Flores, and this one is into the eighth inning. The Nats have stranded five. Each team's had a big fifth inning today. All tied, game one. because of last night's rain out. Pretty well played game. Blake Trinan out in the fifth inning off the hook. The bullpen's been doing the job. Speaking of that, even though some things have already been clinched, there are jobs for next week that are being played for right now. And Jerry Blevins making a strong bid. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if he needs to or not. Who knows what direction they're going to go in, but he's been fantastic lately. And you talk about the five strikeouts today, how he's done against lefties all season long. Has been as good as it gets against left handed hitters, and it just continues it here today against the Mets. And you're going to see all five of his strikeouts. The curveball exceptional. I think the sequence to Lucas Duda probably the best. Threw him a 2 1 fastball right down the middle. He took it. Threw him a curveball for strike three, and then you saw the last one right there. Everybody looking for the curveball, and just throws the fastball right by you. That's Kirk Neuenheis for strike three. Nats reconfigure or configure their outfield. Bryce goes from right to left. Steven Souza Jr. stays into play right field. So the pitcher is hitting in the number three spot. Ryan Zimmerman done for the day. And here's Tyler Clippert against Ruben Tejada, who's 0 for 4 career against him. Speaking of pitchers on a roll. Tyler not worried about R O L E R O L L is his thing because he's just been fantastic. Tejada a couple of walks three K's against Tyler career. The catcher Centeno next then the pitcher spot. He hasn't been missing much with the off speed. Another hitter out ahead, 79. Tejada, one for three today.
I think that fork ball is such now that as a hitter, you can look at the scouting report and say he loves the fork ball with two strikes. He throws it however many percent of the time with two strikes. I guarantee you it's around 80. Maybe 75, 80, something like that. It's one of those pitches as a hitter, it doesn't matter if you know it's coming. It's that good. And he goes with the heater. 92 must have looked like 97. Just missed. Down in the zone with a heater and a foul ball keeps Tejada alive. Hit him. He went change up. And hit the batter would have been ball four anyway. Lead off man aboard. Yeah, three two change up. And now see if the Mets are going to bunt. Most popular way to follow the Nationals push to the postseason with MLB.com map bat, the number one app for live baseball. Get that bat for your smartphone or tablet on the App Store. Visit MLB.com. Bobby Abreu on deck in the number nine spot. Clippert against Juan Centeno. Is he bunting? He is. Bunts it. They said 2 2 2, and the runner's out. Kevin Franzen getting it to Desmond. Didn't look like he had a chance to get him, and that one goes 5 6. Ian Desmond looking at Terry Collins in the Mets dugout, wondering, is the Mets skipper going to come out? And here he is. Yeah. Was it an outer safe or Desmond's foot on the bag? I thought a bold move. You heard Jose Lobatone yelling 2 2 2. Franzen did a nice job. And was Ian Desmond's foot on the bag? I think the throw beat him. Let's check out Ian's foot. And he's on there. That's the only question was his foot on the base. It's a challenge. Ah. You could kind of see it live. Boy, that's so close. I don't think that angle shows it. But the reason you knew it might not be on there is because you saw Ian looking at the Mets dugout. It was almost like a, did you catch me doing that look? But it might have been on there for a split second. This will be interesting. This is the difference between two on, nobody out, and Bobby Abreu coming up. See, they're not supposed to turn around and look at it in the scoreboard. They all do, but you're not supposed to based on the rule for the umpires to turn around and look at the big screen. Because Now the crowd reacts as they see the ball obviously beat the runner. But where's the foot? I got it on there. It's kind of blurry. It's moving fast. But is it definitive or not? Yeah, that's the thing. It's got to be conclusive to overturn the call that's been made. I'll tell you, Kevin Franzen got rid of that in a hurry. Ball tailing on Desmond. His great athletic ability enabled him to stay on or at least appearing to be on the bag. Tony Randazzo with the glasses on. How about one more look? What do you got here? I mean, it came off, but I thought it was after the ball went in the glove. That's a tough one. They got it. Here we go. Runner is out. Eight. Fielder's choice on the bunt. Five six the put out. And now Bobby Abreu against Tyler Clippard with a runner at first base. Good challenge by Terry Collins at this point in the game. Sure. It was close. You never know. You've seen those things go either way. Bobby Abreu against Clippert 0 for 1 career with a walk. Five for 36 as a pinch hitter for the Mets.
I'll tell you what, based on the speed of the runner, Tejada at first, the speed of the bunt, and how long it took Kevin Franzen to get there, I think the Nats are very fortunate to get that lead out at second base. Gutsy call by Lobaton. Eighty perfect on the change up. One and two. One and one, pardon me. Tyler Clippard, as mentioned earlier, staff leader in games. This is number 74. That puts him within two games of the league lead. Bobby Abreu breaks his bat. Long way for Taylor. He will get there. Couldn't pop up and make a throw, but a brilliant play by the rookie in center field. I'll tell you what, speed kills. He got a bad read on that ball because of the broken bat. Saw the big swing by Abreu and hesitated, maybe broken back a step. Watch Michael Taylor top of the screen. You see him hesitate. Oh, then he's got to come full speed. So once he read it, it was going to be shallow. Made up for the hesitation, which a lot of outfielders do on a broken bat. It's a tough read, but what a play by Michael Taylor. Golf clap from the dugout. Tanner Roark, Doug Fister, digging it. A couple of guys who work fast and know all about great defense behind them. Eric Young Jr. will be the pinch runner here for Centeno. Oh, span is telling everybody in the dugout, I taught him everything he knows. Might have. Well, the Mets might be up to something with two outs with a guy who has stolen 29 bases. Eric Young Jr. He's got a good lead. Lobatone, 28% efficiency throwing out runners. And Clippard, after a long look, goes over. Matt Dendecker, the hitter. And he gets a fastball in there for a strike. Tyler's been close with some heaters. And on the off speed, Young not going anywhere. One ball, one strike. This is what the Nats have done so well all season long is control the running game with you know the plus base stealers in baseball keeping them close giving their catchers a chance to make a play. Young leaning slightly. There he goes. Off speed pitch throw right there. Eric Young just beat it. Scoring position, two outs. Well, now you got to make a pitch. You see the lean right there. The plus jump from Eric Young Jr. was the difference because it was a good throw by Lobatone. Clipper gave it to him in a good position, and maybe the change up plus the really good jump allowed Young to get the go ahead run in scoring position for the Mets here in the eighth. 4 4 game.
split coming. That's nasty. Pretty good job of holding the bat back by Dendecker. Wow, Wait. some action on that pitch. Well, you could see it in his glove. He had a split grip in his glove, jamming that thing way back between his index finger and his middle finger, never really high enough to tease Dendecker under a swing. Two, two. He strokes it to left. Harper's got it. Here comes the runner. Bryce's throw way offline, and the Mets have taken the lead. Terry Collins brought in Eric Young Jr. He stole a base, and then he beats a throw from left. 5 4 game. And the hitter, Den Decker, second on the throw. Well, nice piece of hitting by Den Decker right there. Looked like a fastball from Clipper, and I think Bryce Harper had trouble on the exchange. Clutch hit from. The Mets left fielder and yeah, Bryce didn't really get that out well. Maybe had to hurry because of the speed of Young, but it looked like something happy out right there in the exchange. You see the ball kind of pop out of his glove, never got a grip. Yep. Wilmer Flores, the hitter, and he's been on base three times. Well, Den Decker with a big hit. That's his sixth RBI of the year. Flores against Clippert, 0 for 4 career with three punch outs. And the first pitch changeup has him out ahead. Oh, big out right here to get. Because you have LaRoche, Desmond, and a really strong bench at your disposal if you're Matt Williams coming up in the eighth. Rendon, Ramos, Worth. Tyler hadn't given it up a run since September 8th here against Atlanta. Span, I don't think he would use, but you never know. And they've had Edgen and Familia ready. Maybe Josh for LaRoche and then Familia for the right handers. 0 2. And a ball that's trouble if it's fair, it slices just to the side wall down there in the corner. All right, here's your AT&T fan photo. All right, down on the field, total access. The first of two AT&T fan photos today. First person in the ballpark, maybe? Yeah. Wow. Four last to leave. That's access. Long eighth inning for Tyler Clipper. 21st pitch coming. And Den Decker, another runner at scoring position. Even 2 2.
two pretty good hacks by Wilmer Flores here. Yeah, he's hacking. <laughs> It would be good if you could get one in there and make it look like a strike at least. That's fair. To his left, Franzen pops up and throws. Safe at first, and a run scores. Dent Decker comes home on an infield single, and the Mets lead six to four. Speed making the difference for New York in this inning. Well, have a day, Wilmer Flores. I mean, he's done a nice job against the Nats all season long, and he has four hits to his resume right here with an infield single. Nice play by Franzen. Kind of lost his footing going for that ball before he dived. Before he dove, excuse me. And then you look at Den Decker, who didn't even hesitate scoring all the way from second base. That's good baseball right there. There's nothing you can do defensively except for get the out at first and and that wasn't happening. Den Decker hustled home. Hard to remember that last time Tyler Clippard walked off a mound and the inning wasn't over. Ryan Matthews will replace him. On Masson, brought to you by Coons. When you're talking cars, you're talking Coons. Ian Desmond swiping his 24th base of the year back in the sixth inning. Nats have had the lead run on base a couple of times, couldn't convert, and now the Mets have taken a two run eighth inning lead. A two seam fastball, low to mid 90s, sliders the breaking ball, and the changeup is a split change or just a split. Daniel Murphy career three for four against Ryan Matthews. Trying to put out this in and Murphy will go high and deep to right. Sousa looking back and back and it is caught by Steven at the bullpen fence. Nice adjustments on the fly by Steven Sousa Jr. right there. We've been telling you how big the ballpark is playing. That was nice.
That's fantastic season. It's Miller time, folks. Sit back and enjoy. This is brought to you by Miller Lite. Go back to last Tuesday and watch the celebration begin. be great. Anthony Recker in to catch for the Mets. We'll check and see where he's hitting. Could be straight up. And Juris Familia will take over here. And since LaRoche cannot tie the game, they don't go with the left-hander edge in to start the inning, but Familia against LaRoche, Desmond, and France. 74th appearance. Opponents hitting 216. Look at right. He's just 138 against Familia. And his fastball average is 96.4 miles an hour, slider 86, two pitch guy. Well, the Nats have walked a lot this year with the selective hitters in their offense. Every time, Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield, $50 contributed to support Girls on the Run DC. Take that first step towards a healthier and more active lifestyle. LaRoche against Familia, two for three career with a double and a base on balls. This game long from over. Adam today, one for three. In between fly balls to center and right. Well, this park is playing as big as I've seen it play all season. Maybe in April it played yeah. similar, but that ball that Daniel Murphy just hit was right on the screws. LaRoche hit one last time up that I thought would have been a home run had it been a little bit warmer. He's hit two actually right on the screws today. Michael Taylor hit one good to right center field that didn't go anywhere. So a cool, damp day here at Nats Park. Ballpark playing huge. Two balls, one strike to LaRoche. He's had 21 RBIs in September. That'll even things up 2-2. Two, two. Seven. Adam able to stay alive. down to start the eighth. He had a look down there at Jim Wolf like he didn't think he went. We'll check it one more time. Trying to hold up. Jim Wolf says otherwise and a big first out for Familia. Ian Desmond's had a good day. Single up the middle sack fly RBI number 90 and a walk with a steal attached. Too bad the baseball gods didn't let us see a Ian Desmond Mejia rematch. <laughs> I would have loved to have seen that. So well, maybe the Nats will have a big inning and Mejia can mop up. That would be a miracle, though. Yeah. Their closer, who could be throwing one inning from now, reeled him in. 
Probably learned a lesson, probably never do it again. That's you know, a young player mistake. And Terry Collins nipped it in the bud. He said the next day that that can't happen. And he had a top of it. Good. Yeah, not when teams play each other 18 or 19 times a year. Oh, well, regardless, you just don't do that. You got caught up in the moment. Celebration is one thing, and we've seen our share, and that's part of baseball now. And when it's directed at one player, I think that's where it crossed the line. It went a little over the top, but the Nets never said a word about it after the game. They just went out and took care of business the next day, and that's what good teams do. And I was in the clubhouse after that game, and they were each guy that got interviewed in the reporter pool, the scrum, as we call it asked about it and every one of them showed tremendous restraint. Well, Ian Desmond's quote was the best one. He said, if you don't like it, play better. Yeah. Meaning, take care of your own business. And you don't have to worry about guys showing you up. And he did the next day. Kind of a backup breaking ball that hangs up and in two and two. Long day at the yard, boys, and a long one tomorrow. We've only just begun. Nasty slider, two outs. Well, the Nats are in October baseball, we don't know that, but if you haven't heard, one hour postseason editions of Nats Extra before and after every game, log on to MassinSports.com for playoff coverage, brought to you by Masson Dan and Masson, it's your Maximum Nationals postseason network. Kevin Franzen against Juris Familia. Kevin 0 for 2 career against him. Well, speaking of Masson Dan and Kevin Franzen, Nat's archive, if you follow Twitter, came up with there is no wrong pipe t shirt. And I got mine yesterday, and it's wonderful. It's actually got a picture of Mass and Dan on there with a quote. There is no wrong point. Immortal. Yep, those two will be joined at the hip forever. Mass and Dan and Kevin Franzen. But it's not always you can win that Rookie of the Year award in the Mass and Booth and on the field. Yeah. Opportunity only comes along once. Yes. And he ran away with rookies sideline reporter of the year award. Wasn't even close. At Nats Park, yeah. Well, I was two and one. I, I was sincere. I met everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't see the other 29 reporters as much. I mean, I think he had it locked up when he went down the slide at Miller Park. The, the whole there that was, was no big. wrong pipe was just like, did, you know, yeah. that was that was the right pipe that day. He had every first place vote that you could get. I heard the Milwaukee reporter wasn't real happy about it, though. He might have lacked one endorsement right there. Two and one. And the counts even to Kevin Franzen here in the eighth. Chopper. Drew Storn has been up and throwing, chatting with Matt Lee Croy in the Nets bullpen. They have Duda Granderson Neuenheis, three tough left handed batters. Maybe in case the Nets would catch fire here and tie the game. Ryan Matthews could stay in. He only threw one pitch. And Familia, nasty in the eighth, strikes out LaRoche, Desmond, and Franzen, and this into the ninth, Mets by two.
o'clock, game two of the doubleheader. Zach Wheeler, 11 and 10. He's made four starts against the Nets, though, and lost three of them. Geo against the Mets this year, pretty solid. Last start at Miami, seven innings, two earned runs, five strikeouts, didn't walk anybody. And Johnny, actually Byron and Ray will get you going at 6.30 p.m. with Nats Extra on Mass and Two. And they're getting ready for their Nats Extra post game after this game one. So it's Duda, Granderson, Neuenheis against Ryan Matthews. And a good test for Ryan with his sinker against these left-handed hitters. Big shift on against Duda, who's two for four today with a pair of singles. Duda against Matthews, 0 for 2. Interesting with the Trinan sinker, they didn't have this shift with the mid 90s. Hmm. Yeah. Well, two. Ian Desmond stays home, and Kevin Franzen moves to a position almost up the middle. Well, he's a rover, anyways. <laughs> Wherever. Put him anywhere. Yeah. Three and oh. Careful right here, he's swinging. Yeah, Lucas Duda has a chance to make it to 90 RBI, sitting on 86. The Mets are heading home this weekend to face Houston. See if they can stop Jose Altuve, who has 222 hits. I tried to get into a debate with Mel Antonin yesterday about the American League MVP, and he was all Trout, and I was Altuve, and then he won immediately when I just pulled up Trout's numbers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good comeback by Ryan Matthews, by the way. To second hitter, he retires, one out here in the ninth. But I'm part of those little guys that play second base. Yeah. So. Well, and Trout's the best player on the best team in baseball. Hard to go against yeah, that. His OPS off the charts. You might say that Mike Trout has a much better cast surrounding him than Jose Altuve has. But man, that kid can play. You know, you know what we did. In my, my debate was I had him, the stats up on my cell phone. And I slid it over so you couldn't see Astros. It's all you saw was the numbers. You couldn't see who it was. And I just showed him, you know, yeah. 53 stolen bases, 222 hits. You know, all the doubles, all the triples, the OPS. And I said, take the fact that there's Astros and what place they're in out of it. And is it the most valuable player? And I mean, his point was great. He said, well, where would the Astros be without him? Where would the Angels be without Trout? And that's how you determine the most valuable player. And I think when you go to the National League, it's a no-brainer right now. And I've never been in the the pitcher should win the MVP camp. Never. Right. This is the first time I've ever thought, you know, watching Clayton Kershaw last night, the triple he hit in the gap, the, the comebacker play he made behind his back. He's a baseball player. And, and even though he plays 35 times a year, where would the Dodgers be without him? And, in my mind, he's the MVP. Lock it down. Yeah, and he missed almost a month. Made that first start in Australia. Out for a month, and he still wins 20. Who does that? Him. They would be a below 500 team without him. And I think that's where the conversation really ends. Yeah, he'll, he'll take home serious hardware this winter. He's already a shoe in for the Warren Spahn Award that goes to the best left-hander in baseball. He'll win that for the third time in four years. And Geo's the only guy who interrupts that streak. And Trout, 172 hits, 114 runs scored, 110 RBI, 35 home runs. His OPS, a cool 9-4-3. So, yeah. Curtis Granderson on for the fourth time. This is really the first... What you would call good offensive game Curtis has had against the Nats all year. So he's at first with one out. Neuenheis the next hitter. And Neuenheis so for one career with the base on balls against Ryan Matthews.
Ball out twice. Six for New York. They've out hit the Nationals 13 to 9. Took the lead in the first. Nats tied it in the fourth. Teams traded three run innings in the fifth. And Matthews can't get over that outside edge, and it's 3 0. Oh. Well, Matt Williams doesn't want to go any deeper in his bullpen. He's looking for Ryan Matthews to finish things up here in the ninth, keep it a two run game, and give his ball club a chance to. Walk the Mets off in the bottom of the ninth. That is fair. Fan took a swipe at it and missed it. It's deep in the corner. Souza, good job of getting it back in quickly. And it's a one out double for Kirk Neuenhuis. Now the Mets threatening to take a three or four run lead. That'll bring in Ruben Tejada. Yeah, 3 0 green light got a straight one. Ryan Matthews goes with a four seam fastball when he has to throw a strike. And Kirk Neuenheis on it. Second hit of the day for Neuenheis. Granderson looking at Tim Tuffle if he was going to send him. Now, decision time for Matt Williams. But I think, you know, based on Ryan falling behind some hitters, you can't afford to walk the bases loaded to get to Anthony Recker, who's in the on deck circle. You got to go right after Tejada. Yeah, either a righty or a righty here. So squeeze alert is on, too, by the way. Heads up. Yeah, Tejada, good buncher, good speed. Good runner at third, Branderson. That's low and away. Ryan falling behind. He fell behind Duda before coming back and striking him out. See, I think this is when you do squeeze when you're up by a couple of runs. And it's not life or death if you get it down. And a ball to right. It'll fall in front of Souza. The Mets have a three run lead. And now another runner to third base. It's seven to four. And Tejada's second career hit against Ryan Matthews. Yeah, with. Three more games in the next two days. This is a hey, this is your game speech right here. I don't think Matt Williams wants to go any deeper in his bullpen with a game tonight and two tomorrow against the Marlins. Yeah, nobody war warming, so it's Ryan Matthews' time here. He's got to take on Anthony Recker now, who's one for two a career against him. Still only one out. Henry Mejia hasn't worked in several days. The Mets could bring him in, even if it's a non save situation. We'll see. Well, this is where in 2012, Ryan used to have the double play in his back pocket with the sinker versus a right hand. And he needs one right now. Pretty good hack by Wrecker. Even 1 1. So the pitcher spot next saw Eric Campbell there. Nats have a Lobatone, Espinosa, and then the Washington pitcher do up bottom nine. Pardon me, Sousa Jr. still in the ninth spot after the double switch. The Nats pitcher actually third. In the order.
Counts even 2-2. Two -two. You see that sinker tied up record. You got to go with the same pitch right here in 2-2 two -two count. And the 93 just blown away. Good speed at first. Tom Goodwin just visited with Ruben Tejada. Could be on the move here with one out. He holds and it's a foul ball left side. Matthews walks him. Pace is loaded. Second walk of the inning. Then with Campbell coming up. Matt Williams just needs a ground ball right at somebody here. Well, you got to get ahead. And this is all about strike one right here, right now. Eric Campbell facing Matthews first time. is on the outer edge. <laughs> Off the middle, Desmond, and I have to hurry with Espinosa. They turn to 6-4-3. Nicely done. That's a performance on that at bat by Ryan Matthews that could save a whole lot of arms a little later. On a windy Thursday, Byron Curran, Ray Knight just around the corner. It's Nats extra post game show. Battled back in this one. Blake Trinan early on gave up a lot of base hits, tied it at four, Ray, and then some runs in the late going by the Mets. Some some good pitching by Jerry Blevins. A couple things oh, to talk good. about. Jerry Blevins is throwing the ball great. We'll talk about that tonight uh, after the game. Uh, but Blake Trinan throwing the ball firm, but just uh, gave up a lot of hits back to back in the first and in the fourth, and they capitalized. Uh, just swing the bats great. They had to hit and shoes on the day. So far, 15 hits for the Mets. Yeah, 15 hits will get you a lot of wins. They still have three outs and a lot of guys trying to get uh, going here for the Nationals before game number two. Try to salvage this one. We'll have all the highlights with the postgame show just around the corner. Bob and FP. Let's see if they can get a rally going. Thank you, Byron. Thank you, Ray. Bottom three in the order and Henry Mejia will take over for the Mets. And fastball slider, curveball change. Fastball averages 92.5 miles an hour. And Byron and Ray are looking sharp today. 
I must say. Good, good suits, good ties going on. What will they have for the evening? We'll see. So Henry Mejia, 27 saves this year. That's in 27 opportunities. Well, home runs hard to come by today in these conditions, but the Nats have done it 148 times this year. Every time it's $250 to the Children's National Medical Center. Thanks to our DC Lexus dealers and Lexus, the pursuit of perfection. Jose Lobaton will face Mejia for the first time. I'll tell you what, the National League East has some pretty good back end of the bullpens. When you talk about Deakman and Giles in Philadelphia, wow. and now Familia and Mejia in New York. Clippard and Storm, obviously here. And of course, Kimbrell in Atlanta. Down there in Miami. Kimbrell in Atlanta. I mean, but there is some <laughs> solid eighth and ninth inning guys in this division. So, with the good young starters in this division as well, especially when Fernandez and Harvey come back healthy next year. Going to be a lot of times in the East when you better have the lead through seven. That's a rally buddy on your shoulder. <laughs> is that. Is that <laughs> Is that the good gnome or the evil gnome? What's on the other shoulder? You know, the one on that shoulder saying, yeah, we can do this. We can come back. Lobaton trying to get aboard. Jose, one for three today. Well, there's the good gnome. Be in their game, too. One and two to Lobatone. Pulls it. That's a base hit. Another good day for Jose. He's two for four. Well, that was good for a hit. It's a start. I am digging what Jose Lobatone is bringing to the ball game right now every time he starts in all facets of the game. Danny Espinosa, two for three today. And against Mejia, 0 for one career. Souza next. It's a heartbreaking ball down and in. Well, this is where you go leadoff hitter mentality. You know you got a, a potential game tying home run in the on deck circle and Steven Souza Jr. Or at least that has to be your thought process. So Danny Espinosa trying to jump on any way he can. It's right in there. One ball, one strike. He had 24 years of age. He's been in the Mets organization since 07. And over the last couple of years, coming into this one, some right elbow problems, but this season he's been healthy. 61st game. He's good. I like familiar stuff better. Yeah, that guy's unhittable most of the time. One and two. That's in there. Danny Espinosa strikes out looking. That'll bring in Sousa. Good match up tonight. Gio Gonzalez and Zach Wheeler. Gio career six and four against the Mets. Wheeler two and five against the Nationals. They handled him at City Field on the last road trip. So our usual routine, Nats extra Byron and Ray 630. 
We'll join you from the booth at 7. First pitch right around 7.05. First time, in case you weren't with us three hours ago, since 06, Red Sox at Yankees. Since teams played back-to-back -back doubleheaders. So the Yankees and Red Sox were sick of each other by the end of those two days. Tomorrow, after the Mets leave, the Marlins will be here. That's a lot of Red Sox-Yankees going on. That's loser bracket baseball. Mm. Play your way back to the championship double header. Strike two. Big man, this Steven Souza Jr., 6'4", 224, third rounder, back in 07. A little bit outside, 2-2, two two, a good take. Yeah, a chance to be an everyday outfielder on a lot of teams in the big leagues. He's that good. up and in ball three and Mejia one pitch away from putting the tying run in the batter's box seven four game bottom of the ninth Michael A. Taylor next bat by a rookie. Those were close. Two on, one out. When he saw the reaction by Mejia, he wanted this. What did Pitts Track think? Way low, not even close. Good call by Greg Gibson. So Taylor and Harper the next two, barring a double play. And Michael Taylor will face Mejia for the first time. We see what Michael Taylor was doing there by putting his bat in the dirt. He was just making sure that he had coverage of the outside corner with where he's going to stand in the batter's box. And Taylor gets a front door slider for a strike. And the Mets getting their bullpen busy here. Anticipating Harper next. That could be interesting. And now it's 0 2. Yeah. Josh Edgen, the lefty throwing. And the pitcher spot after that. I don't know many closers that like to look back over their shoulder and see the bullpen up. Usually yeah. that's their inning. Everybody sit down. I got this. I don't know how many he is feeling about seeing that behind him. O2. Didn't bother him in that at bat. He strikes out Taylor. Two K's in the inning. And it will be up to Bryce Harper. Harper against Mejia, career 0 for 3, one strikeout. And then Bryce representing the tying run here. And he's one of the guys that stood on the third baseline in New York and watched the whole celebration last time. The like he, Denard Span, Adam LaRoche, and Ian Desmond were the ones just checking out Mejia's deal. Bryce 0 for 2, then he singled and walked in the 5th and the 7th. Catcher on second base. They just want to make sure that they're in sync with their signals. It's 
Scott Hairston in the pitcher spot if it goes further. Seven four game. Nats battling down to the final out. And that's in the dirt. Out ahead of 93. Yeah, anytime you have a catcher on second base for a number of pitches, as a pitcher, you try to bring your catcher out, change up the signs a little bit, because they'll pick up the sequences faster than anybody. And if they are relaying something, who knows if they are? But the, the paranoia in baseball, to me, reached an all new high yesterday. If you saw the White Sox Tigers game and Victor Martinez and Chris Sale, Chris Sale was hit Martinez, accusing him of like. They had some guy with binoculars in the outfield relaying pitches to Martinez. Bryce Harper on 85. So the big changeup from Mejia gets him a one and two count. Going to stay in the yard on this cool day, and the Mets will take care of game one, seven to four. The Nationals will strand seven runners today. So the Mets have a good afternoon. Torres the winner, Clipper the loser, Mejia 28 save. Maybe the Nats will have a much better night. We'll be back with you at 6.30 with Nats Extra. And then 7.05, it's Geo and Wheeler in the nightcap of this day-night twin bill. This has been a presentation of Asset. So Byron and Ray straight ahead from left field. And from the booth, so long for just a couple of hours.